want to suggest for each of you to do is to think about something that is good enough, that causes enough impact, that causes enough stir amongst the people you're dealing with this year to make front page news. What could you do that would be front page good? A lot of work that I do with the NBA involves getting to know each other well. What I do is I train the ticket sales teams, the people that are on the phones asking you to buy season tickets and group plans and stuff. So when I go around to the different markets, one of the things that's really important to them is that they get to know each other a little better because they all work better when they're as a team. And so that's the reason I asked each of you to have a partner. And so we're gonna do an exercise that we actually do in the NBA to allow you to get to know each other just a little bit better. Here are the rules of this little game that we have. You will, we'll, we'll do this two times. You will be either the speaker or the listener each time we do this, okay? And so at either time, you'll do this. So I'm going to give you the, the instructions as to how this works, okay? When you are the speaker, you must talk for a full 60 seconds. For some of you, that will not be a problem. <laughs> Here's what you're going to be doing. At opposite times, each of you will be asking the speaker the same question over and over again. And the question is this, who are you? Um. Now, allow me, if I may, to demonstrate, if I can with Maria, since I know you and we've been doing this, just to, you can stay right there. Okay. And, and, and what I'm gonna do, you, you will be the listener, so that you're the asker <laughs> in this. So you'll continually do this. So you'll ask me. Who are you? I am Bill Gertine. Who are you? I am chief enthusiasm officer of my own company and it's called the 800 pound gorilla. Who are you? I am loving husband of my wife, Sherry of 18 years, who happens to be in the back today. And uh, three loving boys, I got three boys, 17, 14, and eight, and uh, love them to death. Who are you? I'm a piano player at my church, about College Church of the Nazarene. I, when I'm not on the road, I get to play that and really enjoy doing that. Who are you? I'm a NASCAR fan again because Ricky Rudd came back and I was angry that he left and such, but I'm not, now I'm back again, and so I'm really enjoying that part. Does everybody get this? Yeah. How many of you take a really good long shower in the morning? Anybody take good long showers? Good long shower, you take good long shower? Can you come on up for a second? Your name is? Alice. Alice, if I may, I just wanna have fun with you up here, okay? okay? For just a second. Could you demonstrate to us how it is that you dry yourself off in the morning? <laughs> I start with my hair, because my hair's gonna drip on the rest of it. All right, your hair start, okay, yes. All right. And then I go this way. Always? No, probably. Okay. All right, you go this way. Okay, then. Okay. Okay. You doing this like, oh, yeah, okay. Good. Okay. We're done. As we are so done. Give her a hand. Thank you. If I were to ask any one of you to come up here and do the very same thing, which I won't, would you say you did the very same thing every day when you come out of the shower? Scientists have now figured out why that is. You have 60,000 thoughts in an average day. They now have counted them individually. Here's the problem. 25 to 30,000 of them are the same thoughts every day. Anybody ever drive around on a Saturday where you didn't have to go to work and your car just magically like went to work? <laughs> How does that happen? Oh, I missed my turn because your brain's working that way. That's why it's so hard to do New Year's resolutions because you've got these ruts in your brain and that's what's happened. There are physical ruts in your brain. Scientists call them neural pathways. These neural pathways have been burned there because the same thoughts are happening every single day over and over again, like being in the shower and driving to work. And I'm gonna challenge each of you to really consider the kinds of habits and the kinds of things that you are normally accustomed to doing in terms of interaction with others, and ways in which you make others' days happen. I had an interview because I did a lot of radio station interviews as a general manager of radio stations, and I had a young lady who came to my office, she's about 21, very bright, extremely articulate on the phone. I lost track of the number of piercings on her face at about 18. And extremely articulate. She had a wonderful phone presence. She called, asked for the interview. I asked her to come right over, we talked. And I told her after 20 minutes, I could not hire her because I could not put her in front of 40-year-old business people that would be making a snap judgment of her right away. And she broke down and cried right there on the spot. She said, why won't anybody give me a chance? I'm bright, I've got a college degree, I can do this job. I said, look, you, what you've chosen to do to yourself 
This allows me from putting you in a position of failure. Because I know that others will be judging you based on what you've done to yourself and you absolutely have the right to do that, as all of you do. But understand that others have the right to reject you based on what you've done to yourself. How many of you have ever been in a conversation where you couldn't wait for a hole? Where you see this and you have no, and you're not listening to that, you just want to put your stuff in? And as soon as you get that pause, bam, there you are. See, the problem is when you're waiting like that, when you have a situation where you're not fully engaged and fully listening, you're not hearing what's going on on the other side. And part of the problem we have in general, because we're humans, is that most of us really want to speak far more than we want to listen. Eye contact is one of the most critical things you need to learn because it connotes all sorts of things. Number one is trust. And it's going to be really important that parents trust you. True or false? I mean, you see how my eye contact took so far? How's my, how's my eye contact been? Is it pretty good? It's killer! I'm all about this. I work at it. And I want you to work at it too. The John from Cheyenne, oh my gosh. Do you know my cousin John? She lives on 9th Street. It happened to you. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta get the microphone for this. Well, what happened, the, the dealer was from South Plainfield, New Jersey, which is where I retired from the Postal Service. I mean, we got into a big conversation. Never seen them before. Name tags do a very important thing in Vegas. They do the same thing in Disney. They break down walls, don't they? Yeah. There are people that you work right next to for months and sometimes years at a time, and all you know about them is the first 30 seconds. <coughs> Name, rank, serial number, it's about all you know. Below that line, below the 30 seconds, is the stuff that's really important about their lives. If everyone here was ushered out of the room and we had 1,600 people from the community who were sitting here right now, and I were to ask each of them the very same question I asked you, is there someone in town that delivers a fabulous positive customer service experience? I need you to answer this just in your mind, not verbally. Would any of them say you?